Welcome, 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 welcome back to the Boxing Bookie. We are back. We are back. It is good to be back. Uh, we got a good one for you today. Jahai Tucker and Santiago Fernandez uh, in what promises to be a fight. Um, but before we get into that, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog, or all forms of social media. The Boxing Bookie comes at you for every single major fight. So join the Patreon. Link is in the description. Get the best gambling advice in the world. We hit the lock of the week last week. We hit the week before that. We're going to hit it again next week. We hit the lock every single week. So get the lock of the week. Get Ask the Bookie anything. Request a fight. Get the updated props. Get all of the best gambling advice for just $5 a month. Link is in the description. It's also in that little ticker below. Also, subscribe to the other channel, Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. That's Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. Let's get into Jahai Tucker or Santiago Fernandez. Jahai Tucker's got good feet, good build, 21-year-old, 154-pounder, not sure what size he's going to fill out at. He had this build since he was 17 when he turned pro during, during the bubble, during the COVID bubble on yeah, top rank from Deer Park, New York. He was moved quickly, and he took a loss and a draw, and which is surprising because he's a really good prospect. He's a very good prospect, and top rank – Usually gives you that top ranked diet. They give you a real easy fight. Abdullah Mason is the best prospect of the sport. He's the best prospect I've seen in a while. And I don't mean this to insult Jahai Tucker because I think Jahai Tucker is a good prospect. Abdullah Mason is a much better prospect than Jahai Tucker, who I think is, and this fight's at 160. I'm sorry, it's at 160. His last two fights have been at 60, Quincy Lavallee, and now this fight. He's a big dude. And he was moved along too quickly. Even Quincy Lavallee is better than anyone who Abdullah Mason has fought. He fought, uh, what was it, eight, nine fights into his career. He's fighting Nicholas Sexavili. And Sexavili is a really good fighter. And, like, that's an interesting fight for someone who's eight fights or whatever into his career. He gets past that fight. He looks good. He struggles a little early, loses a round or two, comes back, dominates the fight. That's when he's going from 47 to 54. Then he fights Nicholas Flaws, who's a really good fighter, and he loses a majority of the decision. And, and you don't see this in top rank fights. You guys don't get moved along this quickly. And it was interesting. And I, I think after the second Vili fight, they thought they had a world champion ready to go. He was like 19, 20 years old at that time. And it was just too much too quickly. And then he fights Nicholas Flaz. And Nicholas Flaz is an excellent fighter. And he loses a very close fight. And, and again, he's moving up in weight classes. And you look at what he's done since then. He's beaten Lucas. He stopped Lucas Santa Maria. And then he beat uh, Alfredo Escarga uh, on a pro box card. Like, Nicholas Foz is an excellent fighter. And, and at 20 years old, he fought him in a 50-50 life and death fight. Then he moves on and he fights uh, Francisco Daniel Verón. And it's like, he's not, why is Top Rank doing this to him? And he gets a draw. Then he goes back and he fights Lavalet at the Garden back in June. But this is it's, it, it, it's too many fights. It's too it, it, it's too difficult, especially when you consider Mason Abdullah Mason a better prospect, and he still hasn't fought anyone this good. So it's interesting to see how quickly they move this guy. But he's a really good prospect. But he's fighting Santiago. I say that all that to say he's good. Don't take the whole, the loss, and, and I still don't think Fernandez is as good as the guy who's had the loss in the draw to. Is it a sharp? Accurate puncher. He's got good hand speed, good combination of puncher. He was simply moved too quickly. He's straightening out a little bit, and he doesn't really work his angles enough, right? And he's too willing to sit and bang. I want to see him throw his combinations, pivot out, turn, and keep turning people. He's not a big puncher. He needs to change up his timing, his tempo, his combination. He needs to change things up a little bit. He's a little bit predictable, but he's a great athlete. He's got great reflexes. He's got good skills from the outside. He doesn't have any power, really. Uh, 
he doesn't seem to have his grown man strength yet. Like he doesn't really hurt you, even when he puts together big shots. But he, he can slip shots a bit, quick hands, good skills, long, strong body. He's a really good prospect, a really good prospect. And he's fighting Santiago Fernandez. A strong guy, again, physically strong, stiff jab. He has his jab like a shotgun. Bop, bop. Uh, he, he stays tight behind his guard. He's not your typical kind of over-aggressive um, Argentinian fighter. And he's Argentinian. Basic fighter, not a ton of movement, good jab. Jab is his best punch. Likes it in the middle of the ring. Straight in, straight out as well. He's not difficult to hit, not difficult to find. The, the speed is going to be a factor for sure. Like he mixes up his combinations. Uh, but he's pretty slow. He he goes to the body. He likes to create distance, and he's physically strong, but he's slow. And I, I think Jahai Tucker is just going to box circles around him. I like Jahai Tucker uh, on points. Fernandez is a basic one-two type guy, one-two jab jab, slow, and he doesn't establish himself. He's physically strong, but he doesn't use his strength. He doesn't force you backwards, make you uncomfortable. He's kind of just content with trying to be at a distance. And I, I don't think the way he fights is suitable to his skill set. I think he can be more than he is, but either way, Jahai Tucker, I think, is another level completely. So this is a pretty easy one. I, I think I'm going to give you all a, a, a tip. This is this has been parlayed on, on my lock of the week. Okay, There's no props on this yet, so there's not a ton of money to make on this fight. Jahai Tucker started at minus 1,200. He's down to minus 900. I like this bet. Unfortunately, a $200 bet, which would be two times your normal bet. I just use $100 as your normal bet. I don't care what your normal bet is. Double it for this fight. You're going to hit it. Makes 22-22. Not a ton of money. Lock it in. I like him on points. If you can get a prop on another book, Jahai Tucker on points, I like that. I think this fight goes with this. I like the over. I like the fight to go. I like all those bets. Jahai Tucker on the money line times two. Two and all bet makes 20 22. This is a great bet. And it's your parlay. If you want to parlay this and then Billy and some other things, like this is a good bet. Jahai Tucker is another level from Santiago Fernandez. He's going to outbox him. Fernandez is not the biggest hitter. So it's not like Fernandez is going to break him down. He doesn't really use his physical strength. I think this is, I don't want to say an easy win, but a clear wide decision victory for Jahai Tucker. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog, and all forms of social media. Guys, remember to join the Patreon link. It's in the description. It is August 16th, 2024. From Texas to the world, thank you, and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.